tag surface. Uh, so it will give you, uh, for instance, uh, the cases of n equals uh, uh, 2 but degree 1 and 2, those are actually uh, Riemann surfaces with no holes. So degree, so, um, so what we have need is the genus of the surface given by the complex points. Okay. You see how we went from uh, a curve that's a line, but now we go to the complex number that we have two dimensions, two real dimensions, so we all, all of a sudden we get surfaces. Um, so the genus of the surface is the number of holes the surface has. So when n is 2, the degree of f is uh, 1, 2, you get spheres. Okay, and the genus is 1. When uh, the degree of f is 3 from the 4, what you get is um, elliptic curves. An elliptic curve over the complex numbers is actually a torus. It has one hole. Okay? genus, which is what you typically observe when the degree of f is bigger or equal to 5, it will be just um, one of these uh, drawings uh, like that, okay, with, uh, with a bunch of holes. Um, I, I, the, the very first printing of the book had no picture of, of these. And Somebody wrote to me very angry that how did you not include pictures of the holes? Uh, so there is a new reprinting with the picture of the holes. Okay. So what happens when you have more than one hole? So there's a, a theorem of uh, of fault banks that says that if your curve If you have at least two holes, then you must have only finitely many points. Um, that's only finitely many. Q uh, rational points. Okay. So in a sense. Um, what I was going to say also is that, well, we don't know, we have some methods on how to find points on, on curves of higher genus, but it's, it's like you have two little tweezers and, and you pick very carefully what curve you can do and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we're starting to know some ways to do this, um, but, uh, but the, the the silver lining is that we're not missing much because any of those curves have a small, at most, finitely many Q rational points. So at least we're not missing infinitely many points on those curves. So in a sense, uh, the elliptic curve K is the richest of them all because all the possibilities can happen. You can have no points, finitely many points, or infinitely many points. And uh, everything else after that, you all have to find finitely many points. And that's it. There is no curve up there, out there with any bigger equal to 2 with infinitely many points. Again, we, are, we would be also just as interested, very interested in, in being able to find those points. For now, we are uh, doing one thing at a time and trying to solve what happens with the little curve. Okay. So, um, so back to then, now back to uh, elliptic curves. This is a good point for questions. It's a good rational point in the talk. Do you have any questions so far? Um, is, yes. Is there any bound on how many solutions we might want to know to know we can get all solutions? Or, because we know that one point won't get us all solutions. A bound, in, in what case? Like in the with 
where um, in previous cases, if we had one solution, we could find all of them. Is there like if we get five? We can get all so, of them. So, so there are, uh, this is something I was not going to mention, but since you asked, I will mention. In the elliptic curve case, there are some bounds. Um, uh, so, Baker proved that uh, for the integral points, at least, for the integral point, there is a bound. So, if you give me an elliptic curve, I can give you a bound. Now, the bound is something like. Uh, This is uh, section 2.3. Uh, it's something like the maximum value of x or y in absolute value is e to the 10 to the 6 times in the exponent the maximum of a or b to the 10 to the 6. So. <laughs> so, uh, so Baker proved uh, that if x, y, is an integral point, then uh, the maximum of x or y is less or equal to e to the 10 to the 6 times the max of a and b to the 10 to the 6 power. So yes, there is, a, there is such a bound. Completely useless. <laughs> but there is such a bound. There are, there are some conjectures, in fact, that, um, that, that there, is, there is a bound like that, a little better than that, but the conjecture is that it's pretty bad in, in general. And, and you can see also, there's an example here, there's a bunch of examples like this. People are uh, amused uh, by finding equations that have small coefficients, but the first solution you find is very large. And uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, <coughs> This elliptic curve has uh, the first solution has like zero zero. And then beyond that, uh, that, there is another. There is a generator of the points that are of infinite order. That point we'll see it has point order two. Uh, so the ones that are of infinite order. The generator has some enormous x coordinate in terms of like the, the number of digits of the numerator and denominator. So yeah, there are some bounds, uh, but even those are just uh, uh, they they seem like it, it's it's really hard. You need something else because they get very bad. It's not that it's not that Baker's bound is just okay. He just he proved something theoretical, uh, and, and this was a huge big breakthrough, um, but. It's not just some, something theoretic. It's there, the, the points can be really, really um, tricky like that. Okay. So um, all right. So um, what what I was saying before um, was that uh, we we have defined elliptic curves in two ways. And that, that's not good in math. So uh, unless they're equivalent. So. An elliptic curve now is a cubic, a plane cubic that is non singular and has at least one point. But then we defined it in some uh, uh, very short way before. So, it turns out that there is uh, always a transformation that brings you, there's a, an algebraic transformation that brings any cubic, no matter how complicated it seems, that brings it to the short form that I wrote before. Okay? I'm not going to explain that. Uh, instead, I will send you, I will post uh, a handout on how you do it. Okay? So, um, my friend uh, Ryota Matsura wrote this uh, little handout and it's uh, very handy. So you can always find an algebraic transformation, some map that brings it to uh, what's called a body stress equation. Example. 
this is explained uh, much better in the notes. Um, you might be interested in uh, numbers that are the sum of two cubes. Um, by the way, something that I'm not sure we've done a very good uh, um, advertising that on Friday uh, at 7.45 p.m. we will be showing uh, the man who knew infinity. There's a, a, a movie that was in theater, Jeremy Irons, and the guy from Slumdog Millionaire, and, uh, <laughs> uh, which uh, by all accounts was very good. So uh, we're going to show that movie, and then Ken Ono, who will be here for the conference, who is a uh, big name in, in the theory of modern forms, uh, he was one of the producers of the movie, and he will be doing a Q&A after the movie. Um, so, this is, by the way, it's not out in like DVD or something, it's a theatrical uh, uh, showing of the movie uh, just for us. It was not easy to accomplish. Okay. <laughs> so, so, go see it and enjoy it. <laughs> Alright, so, um, so, the famous taxi cab numbers, for instance, you can put 1729 in there and try to find out what are the integral points in there. And from an agent would say, you know, that, well, um, you know, so, um, so, but we actually, uh, all the, the, the software is better suited to work with short value stress equations. So how do you do that? Well, you can actually show that these, uh, elliptic curve transforms to that one via this is the uh, algebraic map I was talking about like this and then do arithmetic on that one that is uh, that all the software packages are um, happier with let's see Um, yeah, in any case, what I had there before it uh, kicked me out um, was uh, <laughs> so um, the competing software that uh, uh, Harris was talking about was uh, Magma. There are other things called magma, so you just put magma to show people can't know why. Um, okay, so so let, let's see if I can do this quickly. So first, I'm going to define. Uh, Harris was saying like, oh, but switch is free. Well, magma has this online calculator that is free. There is a limit on the computations, but there's a lot of things. It goes really quickly. And there's a lot of things that you can do just with this calculator. You don't have to have anything installed in your computer. You don't have to log in. You don't have to wait. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so uh, the elliptic curves uh, naturally live in projective space, and that's something I have not, have not emphasized. But all my curves are projective. So I always have to look at infinity. That I don't have singularities at infinity either. So I'm going to define projective space over the rationals and uh, of dimension two. Okay, I, I, I like to submit just to make sure that um, uh, that nothing is wrong. And then I'm going to define a, a curve uh, uh, over this projective space um, with uh, that equation uh, minus seventeen twenty nine. Uh, cube, okay, so that indicates it, good, okay. So um, what do I want to do? I don't want to do this one, I want to work with a short value stress model, so I want, I'm going to call it E, I'm going to um, uh, transform it, so I, I'm going to call it C. But to do this already, it's telling me, are you sure it's an elliptic curve, then you better give me a point. So is there a point that I can give it? Sure. I don't know. Let's say I don't. I don't know the Ramanujan stories. I don't know how 1729 is a sum of two cubes. Uh, but there is a simple one that is uh, one minus one zero. Okay, that's a point. Okay. 
That's a point at infinity in my curve. So that, that's good enough. Uh, and then uh, call it, let's see what it does. So what that, uh, that does is give me a bias stress equation. There is a y here. We'll, we'll mention that in, uh, next time, that uh, the bias stress equations come in two flavors, long and short. But basically, this is almost as good. Um, uh, the, the only thing is that this, uh, these denominators I don't like too much. So, so what I'm going to do is do a minimal model so it finds a better uh, model of that, get rid of denominators and so on. Uh, and now it gives me an elliptic curve that, um, that has the smallest possible coefficient that is isomorphic to the one I started with. And now I can do computations on that one. Uh, the same, uh, uh, the same, this, this, uh, this thing right here, when I did that, it actually, uh, something was hidden that, um, Yeah, it actually also gave me the, the map, the algebraic map that goes from one to the other. So now I can, I can uh, compute in the new curve, do, uh, do math in there, and then send things back to the old curve and do computations like that back and forth. All right, I'm going to stop here. Um, there is, um, there is a, a homework set here. Liang uh, uh, prepared some exercises and printed a bunch of them. These are also on the website, Liang. Yeah, just close it. These are also on the website, but if you want a physical copy, there are copies here for you to take. Okay. So uh, we'll continue tomorrow.